Well, experience loss and fishies. We're a totally voluntary group. We get no government funding whatsoever. We're totally dependent on people's goodwill. Now I've had a couple of stores approach me, and the food they want to offer me is buy tins and stuff that's going out of date. And when I tell them we don't use it, they look at me, you know. You don't use it. I said, well, very simply. When my wife comes into your store, she doesn't say, where's your aisle for the buy tins and where's your aisle for the out of date stuff? People are coming to us. Now, we're in the middle of no man's land. And we've got people coming, wee bits of children, and they're walking three and four miles. And there seems to be a fallacy going out that it's misused, it's greed. These people are, uh, they're layabouts, they're rogues. They're people that's in total dismay. They're frightened, they're insecure. They've no money. I've got, we got a phone call this the other day there, for the social work department. Can you give us food for a family that they don't need to cook because they've no money for their electricity? You know, so it's, the picture that the government's painting is in totally, totally wrong picture. Yeah. People are coming here, they come to us. Last night, we were in at Renfrew St Stephen's, we do a meal there. When the last came in, they sent for a job, done two hours' work, and he even brushed the floor up and he's finished. He hadn't, he wasn't asked to do, but he'd done it. And the manager asked him, down and he says to him, no, you're not suitable. And he never got a penny for his two years' work. That's immoral. When these things happen in this 2014, these things are immoral. For somebody to do anything, whether Labour is worthy or not, if they've went there and they've done the best that they could and they're maybe not suitable, they're still entitled to the payment that they've put in for that job. I don't think anybody in here would be toiling away through here next week if they want to get in time for their day's labour of the day, eh? And this is happening all the time. Yeah. The amount of people that comes to us that's sanctioned. It's unbelievable. Well, a man that comes to us has been sanctioned for 11 weeks. And that's 11 weeks without any money. Oh, it's my shoes. They're coming back to you. Of course they're coming back to us. If you have no money this week, you're not getting any money next week. How are you going to feed yourself? We've got a lady that hadn't yet for three days because she was feeding her children. The East Nights get buried under the table. They don't come to light. It's easier to say, oh, they're thieves, liars, cheats and layabouts. They misuse their benefit systems. The benefit systems are based in the national poverty line. Who are the companies that's paying below the national poverty line? Name them and shame them. Who are the companies that's not paying their inland, their inland revenue? Now, when the government brought this out, they had a meeting on the Thursday. They made a decision on the Thursday to change the benefit system. And the Tuesday, it was made law. Fact. At the same time, we're talking about looking at these companies that's not paying their proper tax. We're still looking at these people not paying their proper tax. It's the most simplest thing in the world to solve. You are the managing director of this company, we reckon you that tax, you have not paid it. Not to pay your tax is unlawful. If it's not paid by the end of next month, you, you and you's gone to jail. Because that's basically what you're doing to the people that's gone for benefits. You're not getting it. I don't think you're worthy of payment. That's what that's saying. Who is it we're going to do with them? 2014 and people can't eat. Yeah, Dave. OK. Um, Dennis and then Ken. It's fragmented. Really. I can only speak for East Bread. People go anywhere. We'll take food parcels anywhere. I've sent stuff to Obin. There's a biology contractor that takes it up free. I've travelled to Peebles. I've travelled to Alexandra. And I've not always went willing. But I've always come back glad that I went. When you get there, and people are breaking their heart because you brought in a bag of messages to them, and maybe a couple of toys for their kids. Now, East Coast Bride, we're never going to get the true figures. True figures can't even come because government departments misuse the whole thing. Fact. Where you want to accept the way you don't want to accept it's a fact. I got a phone call. I walk with two sticks. Sometimes I don't always get out. 
So I get a phone call and it's always out of hours. Oh, Dennis, can you help us with a bag of messages? I'm very sorry, I can't manage it now. Friday. But I could maybe manage to get something to you for half past four. Oh, we stop early on a Friday. We don't work Saturday and Sunday. I'm busy Monday and Tuesday. So, what about Wednesday? What's this emergency? That family's now sitting to Wednesday waiting something to eat. Now, the answer to that one is, oh, well, we'll just need to use our own budget. If they use their own budget properly, and when the budget runs out, we'll manage to get a true figure of the amount of people that's really struggling. I get a few other organisations. And it's the same thing, or oh, we'll need to use our own budget. I went to the social work department and I said, Trey, how much food parcels do you need for Christmas? Because as you all know, this doesn't need to happen in a couple of days. Yeah, you give me an idea of money. Oh, we're not using them this year. Oh, that's smashing. You'd not get into hungry. No, the staff's been making a mess of the room. So we don't want to store it. East Coast Bride. Fact. We saw this. Well, that's the food puzzle. If you've not got rid of them in two weeks, they're getting flung out. Who are these people? They does not want to take the responsibility of their own property. We've got Lindsay House. It's a ten-minute walk for the Civic Centre. Andy is homeless, must appear in South Lanarkshire, must appear at Lindsay House. Why can't you set something up in a room in Lindsay House? Now, Lindsay House, I don't know, they've got, they've got a room as big as that area there, lying empty. We're in a position to provide the food. It's a lot easier for somebody to walk ten minutes with two kids than it is to walk four miles with two kids on the other end. We're not linked up. There's certain people who don't want that in here. We're not allowed to store food in here. The one for Oregon. This food could be cross-contaminated or recalled. Well, if it's recalled food, it's in every television programme, every newspaper and every radio programme. And Sainsbury's would be very interested to see how you get cross-contaminated by a packet of rice and a tin of beans. So excuses. I've been, I've been doing this for 1992. This isn't new. This isn't new. This is just growing, exploding. We started off with homeless people. My wife's sitting in the back there. She's been going to meetings for 1993, and I hope this meeting sincerely brings something about. Because the only thing that changes in these meetings that we go to is the date. The last one I went to, I came home and I said, what do you think they said to me, Cathy? What do you think they were saying? And she told me word for word what we said. The only difference is, we may be in the top of it by 2016. We all sit and we bandy figures about it. Is people not important anymore? Is your constituents not important? Hey, can you give us a parcel for a baby? It's going to be born on Tuesday. And then we'll be a lay out. She's not entitled to be any benefits. What's the right of that child? Doesn't even matter damn what the mother's done. Surely we're social work departments and we're people in power should be looking at the benefit of that child. But that child had to get somebody to come to a food bank to see if it can get clothes. Eh? 2014. This is the real reality of this whole thing. Figures, figures, figures. What's the real figure of the people who's committed suicide through benefit cuts? Nobody able to make men's eat. People come to us and they're terrified. I don't want you to know if they're their circumstances. They've already sat in a social work department, played their heart out, and then they have to walk four miles to me. And they feel they've got to sit down and tell me again all their problems. But we've got a wee sign in the door that says, no smile, no entry. And that's all they need. Come in with a wee smile on their face and they get their parcel. And I'm not there to judge them. I have a breakfast, a lunch, an evening meal and a cup of tea before I go to my bed. That's some power when I can start deciding when somebody's going to eat and if they're going to eat. And that's what we're doing here today. We're sitting here making decisions. Is somebody going to eat? Are they not going to eat? Who is it we're going to do to make sure that people have no go at debt? 
I was brought up with your parents. It brought me up to believe that those that can should do for those that can't. And we shouldn't have lost that in this society. Powers of be. It's time we woke up to reality. We don't need to have meetings to decide as the benefit cuts get a rise to do with food banks. My seven-year-old grandson's got auspices, and he could tell you his, he could tell you as let's be truthful. Let's be truthful about the whole situation. The situation is people are getting penalised for being poor, for not having, for not having the ability to, not having a job, go to a food bank. How would you feel if we made a decision here the day that every MP had to get the electricity and their gas cut off, their fridges and their freezers emptied and sent to work for four months of and get a grub off a food bank. How do you think you'd feel about that? See, that was part of the cause. You had today to be an MP. You'd maybe realise what it means, what the policies really mean to people. No financially. And there. And there. People come to us and they're broken. Do you know what has to storm me somebody that's breaking their heart? Because they can't feed the rains. That's what this is about. It's about building a society that's worthwhile. No demeaning people. Because they can't work, does they make them a lesser person? But this government's got everybody thinking that people that's own benefits is a thief, a liar, a cheat, and a layabout. And that's the furthest thing for the truth. Because I live in benefits. I'm in pension support. And I'm no thief, I'm no liar, I'm certainly no layabout. Stop pigeoning people. Put them in duties. We've got a chance to do something that's real. Real. Something positive. Don't spend it banging figures about. Get to the heart of the matter. And the heart of the matter is people are starving. They're coming and they've not got money to feed. Can you gain them something they don't need to cook? You know what I that was during the war. My wife said it the other day. You know, no, no, the difference is, you know, we live in a 21st society, 21st century society, and we're dealing with 1930 values. Because you're needing a wee voucher to go to your food bank. That was the same as you had your ration book. That's what I'm going to say. Thanks very much,